Are you tired of feeling scattered, overwhelmed, always late, not really sure where your time's going? Today I'm gonna be showing you the five Google Calendar hacks that are gonna help you become the most organized, timely, professional version of you. If you work across time zones, be sure not to miss number four. Hey friends, I'm Coach Tiffany Taylor and I'm a business coach. I help entrepreneurs streamline their business, optimize their time, and build profitable personal brands. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell below to be notified anytime I post a new video about business, branding, and productivity. Do you struggle with prioritization? Like you have all the things in the world to do and you're not sure where to start or what to focus on next? I hate that I have to be the one to tell you this, but whoever told you that creating a to-do list is productive, they lied to you. Maybe they didn't if you were a child in school, which is where most people learn to use to-do lists, but this is the laziest form of prioritization and it's the least productive way to organize your time and tasks. If you're not ready to make the jump to a Google Calendar yet, which you absolutely should do, go ahead and grab my Trello board. It's a free Trello template you get to help you learn how to prioritize. That way you can spend more time working on your business and your brand rather than in it. Go ahead and get the info. I think it's down below. You'll grab the link to my free Facebook community. Once you're inside, you'll get access to all of my goodies, including that Trello template. Let's get right into it. Okay, tip number one. If you look at your calendar and you get overwhelmed because you see it's fully booked, a really good hack for this is having your own legend for what the color coding means. If you need extra colors, there's an extra Chrome extension for this. I'll link it down below. But really, when you look at your calendar for the week, you should be able to see a visual representation of your boundaries and your priorities, which means Maybe you have work in blue. Maybe you have social time or restoration time in lavender. Maybe you have date night in a yellow or something along these lines. You should be able to look at your calendar and without reading individually the titles, you should see where your energy is going and if your energy is gonna be balanced. Tip number two. If you're someone who uses Zoom and is frequently frustrated by when you use Google Calendar, how they automatically add the Google Meet button, you're not alone, me too. I'm not a fan of Google Meet. I'm a fan of most Google products, but not that one. I love Zoom. I think Zoom's the best way of doing things. However, I frequently get frustrated how when I go to send a calendar invite, I have to open the Zoom app, then I have to generate the link, and then I have to paste it into the Google Calendar invite, and it just takes extra time that shouldn't. So a really good hack for this is if you open Google Calendar using Google Chrome as your browser, you can get a Chrome extension that's called Zoom Scheduler. It's a free extension, and what it's gonna do is every time you create a Google Calendar event, all you have to do is click one button that says, make it a Zoom meeting, and that'll save you tons of time. One place I see people wasting a lot of time is miscommunication in creating events, meetings, in-person meetups, whatever it may be. Either one person thinks it's location A and it's actually location B, maybe there's a time zone confusion, maybe there's a missed email with proposing a new time, and this really just takes up a lot of your space and it's a complete waste of your time, and it can be pretty much an energy suck as well. So what I recommend for this is any time you make plans with someone. This is personal, this is social, this is business, this is meetings, any of these things, always create a Google Calendar invite. If you're working with someone in another time zone, that invite is gonna show up in their time zone. So you can be sure if they accept it, they are accepting it in their own time zone, okay? So they've agreed to the time based on where they are. That's one. For two, especially with in-person meetings, we have a lot of franchises today, like Starbucks. And while you might say, let's meet at this Starbucks, the person might have meant the other and you end up in two different locations. And a lot of times things like this come up. So always be sure when you're sending a Google Calendar invite to have the most information possible in there. You want the time in there, definitely. You want the exact location, whether that's gonna be a Zoom meeting or a very specific location with the address. And you also wanna have the details, like what is the purpose of meeting up? What is the point? What's the meeting agenda? What do you wanna have by the end of this time? It's always great to be really forward with your intentions. What's one question or frustration you have when it comes to scheduling? Comment below and I might make a video about it next. Tip number four. What I see a lot of people doing when it comes to planning is spending way too much time here. Maybe this looks like spending three hours making a weekly plan. Maybe this looks like spending you know, an hour a day kind of prioritizing the to-do list and marking things off a checklist or just deciding what you wanna do. And to be honest, even if it's 30 minutes a day, it's probably too much time that you're spending planning. So I really recommend adding recurring events into your calendar. What do I mean by this? Something like sleep, for example, hopefully is something you're doing every single day. 
day. So add that into the calendar first. And when you go to add it to the calendar, make sure you mark it as a reoccurring event, meaning you instead of where it says do not repeat, you wanna click that and click repeat every day. Now you might not fall asleep at the same time every day, but at least that space is there so you're not overbooking yourself. Same thing goes for exercise. Same thing goes for maybe a regular date night, someone you hang out with at a regular time every week. Maybe this means just picking up the kids from school or taking them to activities. Anything you do regularly, just mark that in as recurring so you never have to think about it again. And if you're worried about this conflicting with something else in the future, you can always mark that as a free event so that you can schedule over it. Reason being, when the time comes, you can always drag and drop to a more convenient time for you. Okay guys, this one's a quick one, but it's so important for those of you who work across time zones. I started my business living in Thailand. I've traveled to 35 countries in the last five years. Time zones can be an issue, and it's definitely um, a matter of converting. What I found to be super helpful on Google Calendar is if you go to settings in the time zone settings, you can display a second time zone. So for example, if I have a client in Dubai and I'm in Miami and we're looking at a time that's gonna meet up, I can look at my availability and just look down the line and see what hour that is in their time zone. Because it's great to send a calendar invite to someone, they're automatically gonna get that in their time zone, but if you're on the phone coordinating, it's really helpful to be on the same page as that person without having to Google time zone converter. And if you work in different time zones, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, tip number six. Change your perspective. When you look at your calendar, find a perspective that works best for you. Maybe that means only looking at the next four days. Maybe that means looking only Monday to Friday. Maybe that means seeing the whole seven days at once. This will help you prioritize and also focus on what's right in front of you. Another thing that's gonna help you focus on what's right in front of you going forward is going to be the dimming settings. So when you go to Google Calendar, you can go into settings and dim past events. It's just a little checkbox. What this does is throughout the day, as the time's going on, any time that has passed, it'll be a little bit dim and blurred. That way you can focus on what's coming up next and not have to find out what time it is every day as you're referencing your calendar. And be sure to check out this next video on how to be more consistent. Do you need more in-depth guidance on this whole prioritizing thing, scheduling and time management? Look, there's no shame in that. Even you know the nine-figure entrepreneurs and CEOs that I've worked with still struggle with this today. And I'm here to help you with it because no matter where you're at in your journey, even the students are definitely gonna benefit from something like this. So go ahead and grab my template. I wanna give you a gift today. If you join my free Facebook group, you're gonna get access to all my past workshops for free, including the distraction defense one. You're also gonna get my prioritization Trello template, meaning you're gonna get the exact structure you need to get better at prioritizing starting today. So grab the link below. I will see you inside the Facebook group.